Hello, I'm Socket from the Fun Robotics Network, and here with me is Team 16965 Supercritical, the winning alliance captain at the Tesla Interleague. Here, uh, learn more about their uh, awesome active intake, their transfer, and their turreted shooter that has really consistent far zone shooting. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new six millimeter hex shaft and motor options and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Let's start with your intake. Um, why don't you tell me what wheels you're running, what RPM, and anything else that you want to share? Yeah, so we're using 48 millimeter diameter gecko wheels and we're using two vectored wheels as well because we noticed that sometimes the intake would jam with two balls intaking directly because we like to intake directly on the wall during our autonomous. So using those two vectored wheels, it allows us to stay, allows us to not jam. And as for the RPM, we're running 435 and it's a belted system. So our whole transfer system goes from their intake here that which sticks out around like 25 millimeters all the way to a gecko wheel up here and is powered by one belt. So that allows us to basically have constant compression throughout the entire build. And the ball will be able to travel through the whole system and go to a flywheel. And we power, we have a whole turret system here for defense and off, like for to counter defense and just better shooting. And it's all powered by like a one 312 RPM motor with a four to one ratio, as well as a Lady Susan bearing off of Amazon. All right, cool. I want to talk a little bit more about these Mechel wheel intakes. What um, what wheels are you running? Like, what material are you running? And have you done any iterations on these Mechel wheels? Yeah, so those are TPU wheels. Those are all 3D printed. And we found a model online that was relatively good enough. And it, would, it just allows us to vector the direction of the ball so that it's relatively, it's relatively uneven and even at the same time. And it just allows us to not jam. All right, cool. And finally, I've seen a lot of teams having trouble with belts um, on on their like active intake. Have you seen any problems with stretching of the belt over time um, or anything like that? Uh, there's been a little bit of stretching. Like right now, the whole system is a little loose, but this is our third comp or second comp running the same belt. And we're using the five millimeter HTD belts, so they don't stretch that much because they're quite thick, but it's still, eventually we'll probably replace it. All right, cool. Um, let's jump into your transfer and how um, all your shooter specs and what you're running on there. Yeah. So basically our shooter, we're running uh, two 6,000 RPMs into a uh, two runner wheels with a uh, steel bearing. That's about a one pound steel bearing. And then we are using a high torque servo motor with a three to one ratio for our hood. And I believe our hood is, a, is, a, is about three, we get about three millimeters of compression through there. And then, uh, uh, we use a uh, we use limelight and um, we use our limelight and our diamond shoot pods as tracking and shooting, and I believe and we have a one to one ratio for our belt system. Okay, um, talk to me a little bit about your hood because I can see it doesn't really go up that high. So has this been a problem for you throughout the season, or um, has it been fine? So for as we were testing, we found that roughly a forty five degree hood angle was about mat was about most optimal. And throughout each testing, we we have a hard limit about fifty degrees. And um, from far, we don't we don't need to expand as much, so there wasn't too much of an issue. As uh, we don't we, the only issue would be fitting in the size of box. Okay. Um, and just quickly go over the hardware on your turret. Um, so tell me like what what um, specific bearing you're running or um, what motor ratio you're running on it. Uh, we are using a one to one ratio, so it's just two um, two six. Uh, on your on uh, your turret. Oh, on turret. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we have a we have four to one uh, gear ratio with a three to one motor. Right. on our turret with, yeah, with the laser suit. Cool. Um, let's jump into the software because I see you're really, really consistent in your far zone shooting. So how do you use your Limelight 3A um, and what algorithms are you running? Yeah, so we use our Limelight 3A to uh, obviously auto aim at the goal because we found that, well, we use pinpoint and it's possible to use it, make an auto aim with pinpoint to just say point out like this goal, like coordinate 70, 70 or something. We found that that drifted over time sometimes and oftentimes using a limelight to get uh, like outside feedback from the equal tag made it very consistent. 
And then also we use the dis we get the distance using the limelight. And the distance we can use that to like calculate how much we have to like do and like the velocity and stuff. As for your limelight, um, do you are you running an active PID loop and you're aligning with your crosshair or are you using it to relocalize and then aim again with your turret angle? Yeah, so what we do actually is essentially we use interpolation for like an angle offset. Because so what we do is we align it to the April tag plus or minus a few degrees. And then what we do is we tune how much offset we have to have at different points. Because we found at some points, we don't want to just look directly at the April tag. We want to either look like at one of the walls or like we want to look at a specific position. So what we do is we kind of just set up our robot in one position. We find the angle offset that gives us the most optimal like shooting, the best accuracy. And then we just like feed like 20 balls through it. And like if none of them miss, we keep that value. So that like, and then it just interpolates that to like, like make the, get us, give us the best accuracy. That's really cool. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about how, how you manage your backspin? Because I know that's a problem a lot of teams have, especially without powered counter rollers. So is there anything that you're doing specially with your software for that? Yeah, so backspin has been a little bit of an issue with us. Most of the time when like our balls do fall out, it's because they're like bouncing a lot from the backspin. But we found that oftentimes if we're just super precise and we just hit the same spot every time, it often, it'll like have the same bouncing and it normally won't go out. At least that's how we found. And it's also, this is just taking like a lot of testing to figure out what's like the most accurate with the backspin in mind. Okay, cool. And is there any specific spot in the goal that you aim for, like the backboard um, or the, the right sideboard or anything like that? Yeah, we typically aim for like the logo. If you might see, there's like a first logo on the backboard. We typically try and hit that, but it depends. Like if we're in some like weird position, we might also aim for somewhere else. Cool. Um, talk to me a little about your path planner as well in auto, um, because it's here that you guys are super consistent in your intaking as well as your shooting. Yeah, so this path planner is actually something that we started working on last season and also over the summer. So our idea was that like we wanted Auton development and path testing to be extremely fast and efficient. So what we did is we first, last year we made our movement library that helps like the robot complete movements like based on like you go from point A to point B, from what heading you start at to what heading you end at. And then it does the turn and movement automatically using that library. And then this year we developed this um, UI and front end that is able to produce JSON files that the library can read in. It can actually translate to paths. And there's also a tag system. So it's not just movement, but also can control like the hood, the shooter, the intake, the velocity and everything like that. And then like I can show you like so for example, this is our um, blue far path and we can play a preview of how our bot will move in this path based on like what we drew. And like through this, we're able to, like if there's some small issue with our autonomous anywhere, we can just like change it really quickly and then test it, especially because we have a feature where, so this connects to a server that's running on the robot. So when we test a new path, we don't have to push to ADB every time. So it uploads instantly instead of taking around like 30 seconds for the um, Android like, package to push. Um, yeah, and then okay. sorry, <laughs> another thing like that's really useful for um, like fixing small chain issues in our path. For example, like for this point, like right here where we opened the gate and picked up balls from the gate at the same time, we had a lot of issues with major penalties for transitive control of artifacts on the gate, I mean, on the ramp. So we can like edit this point and like change the coordinates. For example, if we want to move this down by about like two inches, we can change to negative 14 and then it moves down two inches. So that made our um, like fine tuning really fast. It's very cool. And one thing I noticed is that you're running all straight line point to point. Have you seen that to be an issue? Um, do you plan to add splines or any curves or has it not been? Um, I think in the future we do want to add splines, but right now we found that our movement library with splines, it's just like it moves slower than straight line movements. So we found like, for example, like going from this and going back here because we want to avoid these three. It's faster to just go straight here and straight here instead of doing a spline movement over here. And obviously you have a really working, uh, really great working solution right now, but is there anything that you want to improve on in the uh, future competitions? both hardware and software um in terms of software i think we want to keep tuning 
like the auto aim because it still bounces out sometimes and like one major thing is we want to be able to shoot while moving so like predictive like based on like the velocity of the chassis we like change the turret angle and also like the shooter velocity um and i guess like they can talk about hardware i feel like one thing that i that i hope we can do is actually improve our intake with this belt system as though although this works i feel like we need a bit of a wider intake or a better system of vectoring the wall balls in because through each of our matches we realize that sometimes if we have two balls perfectly inside our intake they'll instantly get jammed and we'll have to outtake that inst uh, instead of coming in and taking all of them at once okay. thank you team 16965 um, this is an amazing robot. Obviously, you had a really high OPR. Great, great job today. Um, and this is Socket from the Fun Robotics Network signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new 6mm hex shaft and motor options, and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com robots.